talk about better than me right after this Because of my God, 
yeah, yeah, yeah. I got the line, I got the, I got the line, I got the line, I got the, I got the line, I got the line, I got the, I got the line, yeah, yeah, yeah. Hello, this is Tony Henderson Mayers, television, radio, relationship expert, author, and entrepreneur known as Wise Courtship all over social media because of my book with a three-step system. It will help you determine the true character and the true intent of your love interest. And um, this is moments of inspiration, encouragement, and prayer where we come together to uh, share God's word to pray for your concerns and give you some encouragement as you walk out of the door. And so I wanna thank all of you who are watching me on various platforms. I'm so excited about that. And I have some exciting news to share with you. We are now going to be seen on Roku television. So if you have Roku, make sure you look for the Amen Corner. That's the app that we will be on. And so I wanna thank each and every one of you for that. All right, we are going to get right into God's word. Um, I'm so excited because today we're going to talk about better than me. So let's get right to it. Okay, we're going to be reading from Galatians 3, 23 through 29. Before the coming of this faith, we were held in custody under the law, locked up until the faith that was to come would be revealed. So the law was our guardian until Christ came, that we might be justified by faith. Now that this faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian. So in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. For all of you who were baptized into Christ have clothed yourselves with Christ. There is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. If you belong to Christ, then you are Abraham's seed and heirs according to the promise. All right, so we are going to, and so today we're going to talk about better than me. <laughs> so I am so excited to share this word with you and I'm a little tired on today, but we're going to still press on any who I've had a lot on the schedule on today, but I do want to remind each one of you that you can watch this broadcast now on Roku, and we're still awaiting um, Amazon Fire, but probably by the time this airs, we will already be on Amazon Fire, and if you're interested in having your programs on those platforms as well, I want you to email me at info at wisecourtship.com, and um, we'll see about getting you on our channel, The Amen Corner. Okay, so I want to focus on this verse and it says in verse 28, it says, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female for you are all one in Christ Jesus. Now, when we talk about this here and one of the pre previous lessons, we talked about this neither being Jew nor Gentile because Jews were considered really people who were keepers of the law and Gentiles didn't really know the law nor kept it. Um, and so Jews very often considered them unclean. But we see here in this scripture, it says that there, there is neither Jew nor Gentile. Um, and at one point, this whole section in this scripture, when it gets to neither slave nor free, there was a Bible called the Slave Bible. Um, just a little bit of Black history for you. There was a Bible called the Slave Bible, and it was a redacted Bible. That is, it meant that a lot of the scriptures were taken out of that Bible, removed um, by a white slave owner, so that when Blacks read the Bible, they would not see the scripture, that there's neither slave nor free, okay? They didn't want them to know that, that there's nothing, no, nobody should be a slave, in other words. 
um, they also redacted um, a part of like Exodus and some other things where, uh, you know, they, they let you read about them being the people being in bondage to Israelites, but they didn't want you to read about the fact that they became free. Okay. That the God said, let my people go. As a matter of fact, somebody had asked me uh, what, you know, God allows slaves in the Bible. said, so, well, y'all didn't read the book of Exodus. <laughs> <laughs> when he was telling Moses, most people who don't even read the Bible know about Moses when he goes to the Pharaoh and says, let my people go. He didn't just say that because he just felt like, it. ooh, I just feel like getting up this morning and saying, let my people go. Don't y'all be touching my people. No, God told him to say that. God told him to say it. He sent him to say it because God didn't appreciate his people being slaves, okay? And so here we see in this scripture that there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female. Now, this is not to say that people don't have genders. This is not what it's saying here. But what it's saying is the discrepancies or, or the, distinguish, the distinguishing um, things that we do with, with gender. I'm so tired tonight, honey. I can't because this is night when I'm filming this. But um, mm -hmm. there is no partiality with male and female. He, God knows that we're different, but our differences does not mean that one is better than the other. Okay. And very often, sometimes because men have been crowned with a leadership role, sometimes we'll take that as mean that he's better doesn't mean that you know I don't know why people get it when 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 the Lord gives people positions it doesn't mean you're better what it really means is you're a servant y'all do y'all miss that when when God chooses you to do something it means you're going to serve doesn't mean you get to be better okay and so when we honor our pastors and stuff we should do that but they are to serve it doesn't mean that, oh, they're the top people and because we got this first lady and all this kind of stuff. That's cute. But we should be serving, okay? Not getting these titles so we can sit up and look important. Um, when he when he chooses Mary to, to, to have Jesus, she had to serve. She had to sacrifice, okay? She had to, you know, she had to go through some stuff. It don't mean you just sit there and sit high in a high chair. I'm, I'm in the big seat, okay? It means that we are here to serve. So when he says it's neither male or female, he recognizes gender. He made gender. He wants there to be two different genders. He wants there to be a male and a female. But what he's saying is, is that not one is over the other. Not one is more important than the other, okay? And so there's neither male and female, for, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ. All of us are important in Christ. Every last one of us has value. And so um, this, you know, this whole last three, this is the third part of a, wasn't technically a series, but I kind of talked about the same themes. Um, and so we have to get this in our spirit because, and, and I guess these three lessons were very much so for Christians, um, but I do want people who are not Christians to hear this. But sometimes the people who are not Christians have this, they have a better grasp over this than Christians. Um, there's a man who wrote, oh gosh, I can't remember his name now. I think his, I think his first name is Ron. And last name, I think is Johnson, Ron P. Johnson, I think. But he wrote um, White Too Long. And he wrote, um, oh, I can't remember the first book he wrote. But it was all about uh, like kind of white supremacy basically in the church. And um, he kind of he kind of unearths a lot of this about how you know sometimes we as Christians, especially even in the Caucasian churches, he was talking about because he's Caucasian, as he was talking about in the church about you know um, the split with the Southern Baptist Church from the Northern over slavery. You know the Northern Baptist Church didn't want slavery; the Southern Baptist Church did, and they're a huge, huge organization even to this day. And of course, this whole story of the National Baptist Convention was a split uh, because you know we didn't want to be treated as second-class citizen among our own Christian brothers and sisters. Which I don't know how you read God's word and don't realize that we are all brothers and sisters in Christ. I do believe that a lot of things that we're seeing in the uh, in the United States today is a reckoning. It's, it's a sin that we do, will not ask forgiveness for 
because we teach this in God's word about, you know, if you confess your sins, God is faithful and just to cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Yes, he is. But I guess we only want to, you know, say you need to forgive, ask for forgiveness for murder. You need to ask for forgiveness for homosexuality. You need to ask for forgiveness for adultery. Though, you know, we just pick certain ones and those are sins to us. But there's a big sin of racism right here in the United States of America that we just will not address. And Christians are at the forefront. And in his book, he writes that the more, um, talk about whites, okay, this is who he studied. Those who went to church and went on a regular basis were more racist. Now, if you ask them something outright about race, well, no, no, I'm not. But when you would ask them other things, you know, that you didn't, they didn't know tied to that, you found that, that they were very, very much so racist because they had certain beliefs and uh, certain things ingrained in them that they believed. And um, we've got to do better. And somebody may be getting really offended by this, like, oh my God, I can't believe she said this and I'm not racist. Listen, if you're offended by it, I want you to hear me, beloved. If you are offended by it, the very fact that you are offended by it means that there's something there that you need to address. And why not see if it's there so you can pluck it out? You know, the scripture talks about if your arm, you know, if there's something in your arm that offended you, cut it off. If there's something inside of you that's wrong, you better get in there and pluck it out. It's better you do that than you find out your whole body is in hell. Oh, y'all ain't going. See, we don't even be talking about hell and stuff no more. All we talk about is I'm going to get rich, you're going to get rich, and that's it. As if riches is going to save us. Riches do not save you. You can have about five mansions, honey, and be living large and laying, falling asleep on $1,000 bills, but that's not going to save you. Y'all need to share this because I just said something right there. That's not going to save you. See, this is why I got to be on my own network because in some networks, you, you can't even get on unless you're going to tell everybody they're going to be rich. Why are you trying to build a mansion down here? You already got a mansion in heaven. So if you never get one down here, you got one in heaven. So you don't have to worry about it. I'm not against money. I'm not against you having stuff and enjoying it. You ought to enjoy it, okay? You don't have to be broke, busted, and disgusted. But it's far more important for you to be able to live with God eternally and get it right down here, the stuff that you need to get right down here and live abundantly down here and then die and live abundantly. And then living abundantly doesn't always mean money because if you, what the Bible said, what is the profit of man to gain the whole world and to lose his soul? And what we're talking about is soul saving stuff here on today, soul saving stuff. And the Bible tells us that there is neither Jew nor Gentile, neither slave nor free, nor is there male and female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. We are all important. And you say, well, I know that. I say that all the time. But you saying it and not living it is two different things. You saying it and see people suffering and you don't do anything to help. You don't do anything to help. You turn a blind eye and that's just too negative and I need to take care of me and mine is not a good sign. It's not a good look for a Christian. A Christian rolls up their sleeves and gets their hands dirty and they um, realize that there's, you're not better than anybody else. Nobody's better than you. You're just as good as we are all one in Christ. Well, I'm going to pray. And after I pray, I'm going to uh, have someone give words of encouragement. And I pray that y'all can put up with me being so sleepy on today. <laughs> but I like to keep it real. And, um, you know, I got a lot of things on my plate that I'm trying to do. Because you know what, dear ones, I'm working like I'm running out of time. Because you know what, we are. God is coming back soon and very soon. And so I'm going to pray. And right after that, we're going to have a word of encouragement by Ron E. Jefferson. Father God, in the name of Jesus, God, we bless you. We honor you. We lift you up. We magnify you. We give you all honor, glory, and praise. God, forgive us 
for having racism in our hearts, for having partiality, for discriminating, for thinking we're better than others, to think well, I'm rich and they're poor, to turn our back on man and not show love and the love of God. Forgive us for thinking that God loves one person more than the other person. God help us to have a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Help us to be more loving, and kind and show the love of God here on the earth, not cause division, not close our eyes to people who are hurting and who need our help because you have charged us to be your eyes and ears and to be the ambassadors here on the earth to show God's love to everyone and not just want us to win, but to want all of us to win. Father God, we pray for all of these prayer concerns. Make sure you put them up through the chat box. We pray for those who are sick. We pray healing over them. God, we pray for this coronavirus to come under submission, oh God. We pray that it will be eradicated from the earth. We pray, oh God, that you will heal, heal your people who are suffering from it. God, we pray for our economy all over the world. God, that you will enrich your people so that we will be givers, that we will be blessers. As you told us, it's more blessed to give than to receive. God, we pray for uh, those who need jobs that are watching us on today those who um who are losing their homes or cars god that you will come to their rescue and to help them that we will surround each other with with your love that we will support each other god that we will um be your hands to, to feed the hungry to be your hands to clothe the naked to be your legs to visit those who are incarcerated and those who need calls uh, who are shut in to bring meals to those who are hungry god help us to be the, th the people that you have called us to be. God, we pray for every concern, every concern that is listed here today. We pray for each and every person, those who are hurting, those who are alone, those who are despondent, those who are in grief. We pray for each and every person right now in the name of Jesus. God, every request that we have, we're making it known unto you, casting our cares upon you because we know you care for us. And we thank you, God, and we bless you because we know that you have already answered our prayer. And whether it be yes, no, or wait a minute, it's going to be better than anything that we've ever expected. We love you, God, in Jesus' name, amen. And now we have a word of encouragement by Ron E. Jefferson. Ron E. Jefferson, host of FIRE, the gospel experience, here to share with you the gospel heat, spiritual truth, and inspirations, and enlightenment. want to thank woman of God, Tony Henderson Meyer, for this wonderful kingdom collaboration to share inspirational truth. I would like to share with you all about trials, troubles, and tribulations. 1 Peter 4 and 12 tells us, Beloved, think it not strange concerning the fiery trial which is to try you, as though some strange thing happened unto you. Trials, troubles, tribulations, and yes, testings. We all have them. And I'm sure that we always will. These are all ways that we will find ways to discover ourselves. To know what it is that we're really made of. As well as the potential to get there. It's all about outlook. How do you see yourself now as opposed to then? Did the trials, troubles, and tribulations throw your faith in such a loop that now you are wondering, doubting, despondent, depressed, disillusioned? Do you feel like Somebody somewhere gave you a raw deal and sold you a 
sad bill of goods by not telling you that these things will surely come. I was so greatly encouraged by a sermon by Bishop Noel Jones where he preached, I had to go through it. He was saying that everything that happened to us was ultimately for our good. Reminds me of my favorite Bible scripture verse, Romans 8, 28. And we know all things work together for the good to them that are called according to the purposes of God. That every pain, hear me, teardrop, anxiety, fear, uncertainty, and every other negative thing was allowed by God to bring you and I to a place of God-centeredness where our lives are now so much hid in God that we are blessed to become his eyes, ears, hands, feet, and voice to declare the great change over our life for good good to everyone that embarks into our life with the wonderful blessings from God to share with all. So, beloved, fear not those trials, troubles, and tribulations, for they will surely come. But know this, that when those trials, troubles, and tribulations do come, that our God is already there far ahead of them to keep us, lead us, guide us through those things that will certainly and definitely make us and mold us more and more into the very image of His only begotten Son, our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. So when those trials, troubles, and tribulations do come beloved please believe this because they surely will don't run from them but be ye ready for them for they are under the control of our almighty awesome God for our good amen I would like to thank um, Ronnie Jefferson of Fire, uh, Fire Radio Show. Thank you so much. And Marcus Cox for his music ministry. Make sure you follow both of them on social media and on their website. Well, I've got to go. But remember, you can visit me on the web, which is www.wisecourtship.com. I'm on social media just about everywhere. It's Wise Courtship or Tony Henderson Mayors. All you have to do is Google me. Just know that I love you and there's nothing you can do about it. And in this day and age of alternative facts, things spinning way out of control, God is still in control. He still sits on his throne. And until Jesus comes back, We've got to learn to watch, fight, and pray. Well, hello care. there, each and every one of you. Thank you so much for tuning in. Make sure you like this video, subscribe to this channel, and ring that bell. Click it for me so that you will know anytime I upload a new video. Are you subscribed to the Wise Courtship Philosophy? Then you need to get your Wise Courtship gear at the Wise Courtship store. Go to bit.ly forward slash wise courtship store all the letters are lowercase they make amazing gifts from children adults men and women jewelry hats cell phone cases t-shirts and more represent wise courtship by going to bit.ly forward slash wise courtship store mm -hmm.